Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash Comps. Today I am bringing you the Frost Lightning team. We're going to be utilizing the wet charges to make Frost and Lightning do a lot more damage. Uh, I did this team technically uh, a while ago with the all mage team that I had up, but that was more of a challenge run team. This is more of a uh, fun Madness 16 team that's pretty decent and pretty safe. It's not the highest damage you could get, but it's also a pretty safe version of it to go for. Uh, we're going to be having Bree do our speed manipulation and Reginald do our healing, while Evelyn and Wilbur dish out all the damage. Of course, Evelyn will also do some speed manip manipulation with some Frost. Um, but before we begin, that is right, you did see we have a mod installed today where we have a new sub-act in Act 1. Uh, I helped test this mod a little bit. The creator is really awesome, and I just wanted to give it a little look and shout it out because it was great. Uh, you can download the mod on Thunderstore. It is Adventure Mode, Act 1 Alternate Subzone. It adds a few new items, a few new enemies, and a new competitive path to go if you really want to do uh, high scoring runs without having to go the same path as always, which was get the Betty sheep event and then go climb up in Act 1 <laughs> using the hatch and everything. So we'll be looking at that today too. Hopefully you all enjoy that. Uh, sorry if not. So let's get into the perks. Uh, for Bree, we have a bit of tankiness. Uh, she's going to be our primary blocker. She starts with the Fortify perk, has a little bit of wet because there's a new warrior card that applies wet. Um, She'll be our speed manipulation too, so she has slow and speed up perks. Reginald, we had to make very fast, and that was so that he could outspeed Wilbur, or at least tie Wilbur while being in front. Um, he has a bunch of heals, a bunch of bless. He's really going full heals. We didn't need too much tankiness, just a little bit of uh, tankiness to survive a turn and heal up. Where Evelyn is max speed, we want her to be going first after Bree, sometimes, depends. Um, she's taking the spark does damage on or t applies extra charges to enemies on the side. Uh, I was just trying to pause right there. Spark on enemies applies 30% of its charges on the s sides of at the start of the turn. Um, that lets you get a lot more spark charges a lot faster. With Wilbur, they're going to end up dealing damage at the start of the turn to the enemy they're applied to as well. So you can get this cascading effect where the enemy with the most spark charges then applies a bunch of spark to the enemies on the side of it and, while dealing damage to the enemies on the side of them and then they die too when it's their turn and deal more damage to the enemies on the side of them so it can be a really cool cascading effect it's one of my favorite builds it's the build i used to complete the all mages run i think it was the only viable one so i just kind of wanted to show it off in a more uh real setting <laughs> where it's not super challenging um but yeah that's a very important perk to apply uh, she also has the wet lets cold deal extra damage. Wilbur is taking extra slow charge. It's going to be very important. I'll show you why later. Um, wet on enemies also reduces lightning resist. And they both have the powerful perk does 10% more damage rather than 5% more damage. Um, but you only stack 2-7. The event we're going to go to is that bottom event, the Smuggler's Camp, as you can see I'm pointing it out. And the caravan event has been moved so that you can go to it no matter what path you're going towards. So you can always see that extra shop. Uh, one of the cool things that the modder did. I really liked it. I don't know how much we're going to play with this mod. Uh, as always. Or like, I don't know how much we're going to use this mod um, going into the future. But we'll see. Uh, as for Wilbur, he's grabbing... Lightning. I, I buy a lot of pets this round um, because the pets are pretty strong for the team. Gauntlets in the starting shop is great. It's going to help Evelyn do a lot more damage in the early game. Wilbur already has a powerful armor or powerful giving armor. So here's my deck for Bree. I kind of already had something set up for this run because I was testing this team on this mod for a bit. So yeah, uh, this is Reginald's deck. It's not the best, but it's a decent healing deck. Uh, rain is pretty important on all of them. They all have ways to apply wet to the entire enemy team. It's going to be very good for our early game damage. And we buy Shatter and Shock Nova for Wilbur, except, oh right, I don't have... I ended up changing my perks a little bit, and I didn't have the money to buy the full deck. I was about 70 shards so short, so... I have to make some modifications here on the fly with what I'm going to be doing. Uh, we upgrade the zap so that we can always target the enemy that we need to. Otherwise, uh, you might hit a random enemy that didn't need to take any more damage this turn. 
uh, rather than killing the enemy that you needed to. So, Zap's a very good zero-cost card. I realized that I didn't have enough uh, powerful cards there. I, I was missing that from my deck, and I'm supposed to have one that starts in my hand automatically, so I can pretty much always have seven powerful uh, first turn. But I forgot to do that. I made a little bit of mistakes. Probably could have let go of one more Zap and uh, not upgraded the... Or, and gotten an upgraded unstable power there instead. But Shatter and Shock Nova are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is Rain 2 worse. <laughs> it is definitely worse. I probably needed to readjust my perk points there a little bit. So we can take a look at the items here. Not going to have enough money to afford anything, but it's cool that we can go here and go into the bottom path as well. Uh, starting off, we have Piercing Hell. It's a pretty lucky get with Bree. You always like to see a little bit of speed manipulation at the start. That way not the entire enemy team goes, except for the fact, or before you set a block, but also... The wolf decided to howl our team down in speed, so that ended up happening anyways, <laughs> a bit unfortunately for us. Um, thankfully, Reginald does a decent job healing here, and uh, we, are already, we keep shifting scroll in the deck for exactly this reason. You really want Shock Nova on round one for Wilbur, at least in the early game. That way you can slow down the entire enemy team for the round two, and make sure that you can go first with all your heroes. So... Very, very critical part of this run. There's no real point in upgrading Shock Nova early. Um, it can do a bit more damage, or it could be a little bit cheaper, but given that we already have four energy and we're planning to give Wilbur some energy at the start, it wasn't a big uh, necessity. So here is the new event. Um, I'll let you read it a bit, but basically there's some thieves who... Are, or sorry, some smugglers who are smuggling items, and you can choose to fight them and stuff or not, but we didn't. Um, instead, we chose to help them out and they told us about something in the cave. Now, we are doing a challenge here that is honestly remarkably easy for the benefit that it gives. Uh, it is a purple Tome of Knowledge, which is probably the most powerful purple in the game. Um, yeah, I have a hard time thinking of another card that is more powerful for uh, being purple and singular. It, it just gives you so much more energy and draw consistency for everybody it because it gives you purple scrolls of intellect which a purple scroll of intellect gives you it lets you draw a card gives someone inspire and to energize so it doesn't even take up a card when you draw it and you get the two energy energize and inspire bonus so it's kind of like transmission but for free and you draw a card <laughs> instead of costing two and not drawing a card <laughs> so yeah very, very good get here. Uh, Tome of Intellect is going to be amazing. Um, I was really happy to have that on this run, and it may have inspired me to do something a little bit crazy later in the run that I'm looking forward to talking about. But for now, let's look at the mod. So, ooh, there were shadows under the bridge. Uh, so no new enemies here, just at old enemies repurposed. They start with stealth and some fast because they got the ambush on us. Um, but we have our Tome of Intellect, so... We're doing pretty okay. And as you can see, Evelyn's doing some pretty good damage with her Frost as well. It's not really high, but I wouldn't expect it to be at this point because we're just trying to support Wilbur and set up his turn so he has a lot of rain. We do, fortunately, draw Shock Nova. Uh, again, very good for us. Let's Brie go first next turn. And she can help make sure that we don't take any damage, or at least take very minimal damage. I opt for the Reinforce rather than another Barricade there, just so we could have a little bit more powerful and I figured the resistance to all physical was going to help us take very little damage anyway. Um, but yeah, Evelyn is doing enough damage to wipe the entire team by herself. I decided to let Reginald go, though, of course, because I want to have a little bit more heals. Might as well go into the next fight full heals. Didn't take us an extra round to do so. And we get an excellent Reginald gets a purple detoxify, basically another free card that gives you at least a buffer, if not healing your poison and lightning. And a good nice little electricity manual for Wilbur. Uh, we unfortunately do break our legs going into this route, similar to the hatch where you can break your legs, so it's unfortunate. But the smuggler's gratitude is really good. That's what we get for not attacking the smugglers and helping this thief down here. Uh, it gets us a card that gives us Energize and a Bless, and we also get these pets, uh, a bunny and a squirrel very early on. You can't normally find these pets that easily in the early game. Um, but here it lets us get a purple squirrely, which is actually really good because it'll apply frost to the entire enemy team and do a little bit more damage too. Not a ton. The, the frost is really what I was looking for there. Um, this bandit leader is pretty fast. As you can see, he <laughs> takes a real big chunk out of Bree and he's very fast to start with with 
and can't have Mark applied to him, so he's actually a little bit tankier than he looks for a lot of Mark-based teams. Um, but still, he's more of a uh, stealth, fast killer. And uh, thankfully, he doesn't get to go on a second turn. His second turn can be brutal if you have to take it. does a lot of damage to the entire team, um, especially if you're not blocking all the damage. Uh, so, yeah. Definitely good to not let him go first on the second turn, but we were in pretty good shape. Got a pretty good draw. Uh, didn't didn't have to have that outcome. Um, here is the way to the second boss. So this actually is the only way to fight the mini boss of this dungeon. Um, is to fight or convince that bandit leader that you're okay, <laughs> and then you can find the wood uh, secret path after. Bleh. Sorry, you can find the secret path after him and go into this little tunnel and fight these. Um, there's actually a randomized like three different fights. It's always a fight before the boss and then the boss fight itself. Uh, all with new... I want to say, yeah, I'll call them new enemies. They're all new enemies. They're <laughs> enemy skins that are repurposed. As you can see, these are using the Lance uh, skin. But they all do very different things and these guys are a giant. So thankfully I do enough damage to kill the Blood Knight before he can do too much more. He did apply bleeding to all of us, which did some good damage, and the Shadow Knight did just enough to finish him off. <laughs> um, he does buff him up substantially and would make him do a lot more damage, but we did not have to face that outcome. So, which is good, because we're not a high block team. This team does kill relatively fast. Um, it's not like a one turn kill team or anything, but it is pretty high damage and will likely kill on round two for most fights, uh, with a few exceptions. So yeah, we take out that fight pretty well. Um, I slowed this, uh, I think I'm doing this part at like 300% speed rather than the normal 400% speed, just so we can take a look at it a little bit more. I do get an upgraded unstable power here, which is nice because I did want that one to start in my hand. And before the boss fight, thankfully we leveled up, so we can take on the boss fight with the full level two team here even though we all failed on the skill check getting in. I think one of the nice iterations for the hatch. So the Mist Knight, very fast again. Um, I think it's one of the faster bosses at 20, or the fastest boss at 25 speed. So very hard to outspeed him. You'd have to get a speed item on one of your fast uh, speed manipulators to even have a chance, um, which I didn't get, but that's totally okay. He's not gonna kill you first turn, so like many of the super fast bosses first turn, like the Hydra or the Dryad, uh, He's pretty well balanced. I, I honestly, the mod creator did a really amazing job balancing all these enemies. It, it was super great. So definitely download if you want to try a bit, some of this stuff out. <clears throat> um, now we do get one of the fun things on this build, which is uh, being able to electrify Wilbur's attack. I'm showing off the skills here. Yeah, so you can just see what this boss is doing. Um, he's kind of evasion based and he has a little buff on him that makes him take less, or sorry, he gets a lot of evasion when he gets below 30% health, um, as well as all these heroes having an enchantment on them that makes them summon something as soon as they hit an enemy, I believe. I, I can't remember if they hit an ally, if it would happen to, but maybe. Um, so yeah, we're summoning a bunch of little mini guys here. We would have to, I don't know if we have to kill them all off um, in order for the fight to end, but either way, we're going to be A-OK -okay because we have another all monsters shatter. So... Shatter does a ton of damage because we apply a lot of frost. It's hard to choose between Piercing Howl and Throw Bolas here, but I choose Piercing Howl because I'm going to want more vulnerability charges later on. Delay Response is another good support card for uh, Reginald to pick up. Gives Energize and Inspire. Elemental Bolt is a frost electric damage, which is exactly what we're doing. It does apply a little bit of fire, which will get rid of some wet, but that's not a big deal given the really high damage it can deal as a multi-damage uh, dealing card that will be getting buffed by the uh, wet stacks. Um, so the three new items are the Mistblade, the Storm Armor, and the Digested Pendant. The Mistblade, when you damage, gains an evasion. Digested Pendant gives you plus 5% damage buff, um, and when you're damaged by others, gives you a buffer too, so it can actually make you a lot more tanky and resilient to the debuffs. And then the Storm Armor gives you plus one electric damage and electric charge, which is really neat to have on an armor. Um, though it's hard to justify taking unless you're always like getting powerful on Wilbur in some other way because it's nice to have a guaranteed source of powerful every turn for uh, for the good old carries. But yeah, 
Uh, Wilbur's a good person for the Storm Armor. It's part of why I wanted to take him on this route. Because I thought it'd be a good fun thing. Um, there's a lot harder enemies you can fight for this team in particular. There are some that counter the Wet Lightning a little bit harder, though they are beatable. Uh, it just... You might get a little bit more beat up while doing it. <laughs> um, unless you get a really good draw. Uh, yeah. We, again, draw Shock Nova turn one. Again, shifting scrolls, even though it's a minus one card. Um, by minus one, I mean it doesn't put as many cards back into your hand as uh, it costs, so you, you technically lose out on having a singular card. Um, and generally, you want to be able to play all five cards that you draw, or more if you're drawing more, uh, every turn. So it's a little bit of a net negative in that case, but the Shock Nova is so worth getting on turn one that I find it very worth having in the deck. There's a lot of use cases for a Shifting Scroll too, so it's often pretty worth it, but in this case even more so. So yeah, uh, we're getting a lot of excellence, which is nice for leveling up fast. I don't think uh, Evelyn needs Shock Nova because she, one, doesn't have a slow perk and two, isn't dealing as much shock damage. Might as well not have it. Um, we do get a free upgrade, so I'm able to upgrade Shock Nova to be cheaper. It is nice. That way, we're often getting six energy on the first turn, so we can play both Shock Nova and uh, Shatter on turn one if we get them both, as well as whatever zaps we draw. Uh, I might as well upgrade Prayer of Healing, because I plan to keep that in Reginald's deck for quite some time, and I upgrade Monogem in Evelyn's deck, because that's pretty good. Now, there's two different routes we could go here. I'm going to go on the top route, because I wanted to show off some more lore and... They, the mod definitely has some uh, <coughs> cool lore implications here where we could maybe see the green death or some other unnatural plague ailing us and we could go take care of it in another act maybe if they decide to make that. So there's definitely little seeds of more mods to come, but we'll see if that ends up happening. Lots of dialogue here. <laughs> Um, basically, this man is very sick, infected with the green death, and uh, we tried to heal him, but we got the green death as well. <laughs> um, I had never actually gotten that before. I had successfully tried to heal him before, but it doesn't actually heal him. The green death is a little bit too tough for me. Um, still, yeah, minus two energize, minus two inspire, and weakness is pretty rough as far as a debuff card goes. So we'll have to get rid of that out of Reginald's deck as soon as possible. Thankfully, only he gets it, not the entire party. That could have been even way more brutal. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of lucky in that case. Uh, here we have, this is, I think, a guaranteed fight again. Um, this is just the Blood Knight and the Water Elemental. The Water Elemental was super challenging for this team in very early iterations, but he's a lot more manageable now. He does... Uh, play this really annoying card that puts enchantment on everybody that makes them deal take damage blunt damage in particular and gain crack and wet For every card that they play up to four So needless to say all my team is going to be playing all their cards Thankfully Bree got a really big block turn with her skill So we don't have to worry about it too much and we do want to kill the water elemental as fast as possible He's not super resistant to lightning as you might expect so we're able to do that. He is really resistant to cold though so, maybe a little bit more challenging for a Frost team to deal with in particular, but if you kill the Blood Knight, then you're going to be in pretty good shape regardless, because you don't do too much. Um, but yeah, Blood Knight does a pretty big chunk there, based on all their bleeding. Uh, overall, though, being level 2, being relatively competent team, this fight's not too bad. Definitely more along the lines of just a regular uh, champion fight, maybe like I want to say, like, yeah, it's it's a your average champion fight that you'd do. Um, maybe a little bit harder than the average, just, like, guaranteed fights. Now, I do get a superconductor on Evelyn. Even though she's not lightning damage, we are going to be having uh, the wet charges on all the enemies, so that superconductor ends up doing a lot more damage anyways. Plus, it applies a lot of spark, um, even without too many spark perks. Uh, we are able to do the Dryad for free, thanks to Bree. There's no real reason not to. The Forest Crown gives us one more fast than we were going to have before, so Bree is now fast enough to take on the world. Um, uh, she will be getting up to 24 speed at the start of every single fight. We can replace her potion item slot for something else. Um, 24 speed is as fast as she'll ever need to be. Uh, there's no really... <laughs> yeah. There's no outspeeding the Hydra. The Hydra is going to be like 48 speed at the start of a fight, so 
I don't need to worry about that. Um, we will be fighting the Hydra. But yeah, I think that's the only other enemy that outspeeds you. Oh, there's the the lava sentry in the lava zone. Uh, again, Shock Nova here. Pretty clutch, even though the assassin guy can't be um, slowed, which was a little bit annoying. Thankfully, he doesn't go for the back hero attack and attacks Bree, who had all our block, thanks to the early fortify charges that we gave her in that perk. Yeah, so... Got pretty lucky there. He could have done the back attack and done a huge chunk of damage to Wilbur. Maybe even killed him. Depends. But didn't have to worry about that outcome. <laughs> we are A-OK. -okay. Uh, unfortunately, still do have the good amount of curses in our deck, so we'll need to get rid of those at some point. We find another Emerald Necklace here, which I am a little bit sad about because I could have sped up Bree even more. But we can give it to Reginald and maybe make him faster. Although it looks like I didn't do that. Uh, luckily, we get a remove card perk here, so that'll save us some gold in the next town. Um, by perk, I mean Corruptor. <laughs> uh, it's the Bomb Corruptor, where they place a bomb on top of a random hero's deck. It happened to be Reginald this time. He usually doesn't do that much damage, and its worst effect is that it gives you one less card that turn. Um, but yeah, that's not too terrible. So I wanted Reginald to go faster than Evelyn, because I was like, oh, but now Reginald can go faster and support Evelyn. I think that's going to be a little bit better, but... That would be the case if Evelyn didn't have the Purple Tome of Intellect that shows up first turn uh, every fight and puts a s Purple Scroll of Intellect into everybody's deck. So, uh, a little bit of a blunder. I'm going to be looking to have Reginald go slower uh, later. On this fight, I'm kinda, I am kind of want to leave them alive as much as possible just so I can have Reginald heal. It's nice that he heals here so that Squirrely doesn't kill everything off. So, in this case, it was better that he was going faster because <laughs> Squirrely would have done 32 damage to like everybody. Um, I'm looking at that three, five slow and kind of interested in Bree, but not really. Uh, I'm not going for the, oh yeah, Prismatic Field is a very interesting choice. Sorry, <laughs> getting distracted there by my past mouse moves. I, I move my mouse a lot on, uh, the recording screens just to go over things that I want to talk about while I'm thinking about them during the run. So it's a little bit of a reminder for me on this voiceover part. Uh, yeah. A little bit of distracting too. I thought about taking the prismatic power there because I know I'm going to be fighting the hydras and the hydras do a lot of elemental damage very quickly, making it very risky for this team that likes to put uh, water on yourself as well. Uh, the wet charges, uh, sorry, the hydra does extra damage based on wet charges with their lightning hydra and it's also one of the harder ones to kill because it's immune to spark. So yeah. Uh, that's not this current fight, though. This current fight is Yelmer. Yelmer is not too tough for this team. Um, typically, you can kill him round two or three, depending on your draws. Uh, he does have a lot of spikes this time. We, unfortunately, just didn't get great draws in the very start, so we have to make do with what we have. It means we're probably going to have to finish him round three, and it'll likely be before he goes again, so not too much worry. Um, never mind. Killed him round two. I'm a liar. <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. Uh, Winter's Night's Tale is interesting for Wilbur, but it's not really the build I was trying to go. I wasn't going to set up the wet charges for him. Uh, so I wanted to go with um, just a clean electric deck instead. Now, luckily, we get Orb of Storms here, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty good get. Uh... It makes it so that we do a little bit more damage on the early parts of this act, which can be sometimes a bit difficult, especially if you run into uh, more electric resistant monsters. We find another gauntlet, which is great. It makes it so that we can give someone powerful every single turn. And we are able to get rid of Reginald's broken bones. Uh, we got rid of the green death during the uh, remove corruptor. So. Lucky for Reginald, he doesn't have to live with a green death the whole life. Maybe it's a little bit weaker at the starting phase of the disease than it is at the end phase. We do want to buy a superconductor for Wilbur. It's a great way to apply a ton of spark um, for a pretty cheap price, as well as just do a good amount of damage if they have enough wet charges on them. I'm able to get rid of the unstable power I bought in the beginning because I found two along the way. One draws, one shows up very early. Evelyn doesn't really need charge batteries. She doesn't do a ton of damage with them. They do refund an energy on the next turn, but like it's better for me if she's drawing some of her stronger frost cards and slowing down the enemy at this point. Uh, we are getting rid of the heals, the basic heals in Reginald's deck, because they're not very good. They just 
don't do as much as normal heals. So, uh, at this point, sometimes I like to buy Entrench on my warrior because they can get two Fortify on the entire team and it's a good way to keep everybody healthy, but that would take up all my shards and I really want to upgrade this Piercing Howl. There's also some other upgrades I could really use, uh, like the Healing Rain to get one more Wet Charge on all monsters, maybe even uh, Transmission to make it stay in the deck. I want Superconductor to be jumping around as many times as possible, that's why I changed it right there. It gives it one more jump, which will apply a little bit more Spark, which should start doing damage at the start of turn and have that cascading effect I was mentioning. Uh, Cold Snap can be a really good pickup for Evelyn. It lets her play her cold spells for fairly cheap, but I don't really have any really big cold spells to grab. I mean, Frost Nova is okay, but it does reduce the cost of them by three if you take them out of your graveyard, which is good. Is graveyard? Oh man, I said graveyard. Discard. Sorry, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. <laughs> now, now I've been outed. <laughs> Uh, so Squall is a really good one that applies Wet and Frost to the entire enemy team. I do decide here that I'm going to be upgrading a lot of cards rather than just getting one in Trench. I think that's pretty good for me. It gives me, um, I, I would say a much better, like, bunch of decks overall rather than just relying on one in Trench that I honestly couldn't even play anyways because Bree hasn't gotten any more energy, either cards or items, so I'm able to buy that Squall. Squall's very nice. It's kind of like rain, but for three, then does a lot of damage and frost. It's it's rain plus frost nova, for one extra, and it's great. <laughs> it does more damage to frost nova too. So, I want to have Reginald applying bless in some way. It's or to Wilbur in some way it helps us do a little bit of extra damage. Um, but for now, I'm focused on just having him heal. Flash heals are great. They are uh, basically a free heal that draws you a card at level three for Reginald, because he makes it so that he refunds the first three heal cards you play by one energy, so very good cantrip, does a lot for us. Frost card's available here as well, um, and being immune to frost is kind of cool, but the minus speed isn't exactly what I'm looking for, and it's very expensive, and I kind of want to save my gold. So we will be going the middle route, we're trying, going ultimately for charged trident. Charge Trident's going to give us a lot. Baptism there is kind of tempting because I'm putting a decent amount of wet on my heroes, but it's not really what this team's about. And that perk doesn't really like hurt us too much, but I have to not play it anyway. Might as well be safe. Uh, this fight doesn't look too challenging overall. The Harpy thankfully only speeds up themselves right now. It's very scary when they speed up the entire team. Um, I was super worried they were going to do that and that I was going to have to take a lot of damage, but thankfully, uh, no such luck. <laughs> Uh, we get, again, get that Shock Nova early on. We also duplicate Shock Nova so that we can play it again. Um, it's another part of Wilbur's kit that's really cool is his starting card that allows us to duplicate. Get, gets a lot of cool spells duplicated later on and lets us have some really, really awesome combos. So, I, th I think this is one of my favorite builds in the entire game, which is another reason I wanted to show it off, even though I kind of did it during the mage run. Um, shield charge is pretty nice. I didn't want the unupgraded version, but I am taking that one. Recurring Nightmare can be really good if I'm changing my damage a lot, uh, which Evelyn can do with her enchantment. Cold Snap is not super useful on Wilbur right now, but I do have Shatter and I do have another Cold card, so Purple Cold Snap is pretty pretty darn good. <laughs> Getting two cards at minus three cost, really awesome. Uh, we, we amazingly find a Cloak of Speed here and a Glacial Hammer. <laughs> um, that, again, my luck on items this run was amazing. Cloak of Speed is basically makes the Forest Crown that Bree got pointless. Because um, it gives her the same amount of speed, or, or fast charges, but also gives her plus two speed on armor, and a decent amount of resistances. So, it's it's really the best thing I could ask for on Bree. Uh, yeah. Very, very happy with that run. We also get Glacial Mallet, which lets Evelyn apply Frost every time she does hit damage to an enemy. So... Pretty, pretty strong. Um, yeah, not too much to say here. Those, uh, it's purple scrolls of intellect have really been helping me out, doing a ton of damage. I make 11 Evelyn's damage electric here, and you can see she could have destroyed if I wanted to, but I decided to go, eh, might as well full heal with Reginald if I can. Not that he draws any more healing spells. <laughs> um, Book of Nightmares can be very good. I wish it was an upgraded version so I could give it to Re uh, Wilbur, because Wilbur's planning to have his damage changed. Um, it currently only affects uh, Evelyn herself, but 
I'm hoping to upgrade it and give Wilbur some recurring nightmares because those are really, really damaging zero cost double hit cards um, if you change their damage, <laughs> which is the plan with Charge Trident, because Charge Trident, not only does it apply electricity and wet for every time you hit an enemy, it also transforms all your damage to lightning and gives you plus three lightning damage, so very, very good. Uh, for now, it might also be useful in Evelyn if she transformed her own damage. So, yeah, that's, that's sort of the plan with the book. Don't know how well it'll work out, but that was the idea anyway. So I do use Shifting Scroll there to put the Shatter into the graveyard so that I can play the Shatter for free. Do a little bit of extra damage. It's not like the most damaging turn I could have drawn, but pretty good. We unfortunately didn't get Shock Nova, so we won't get to go before everybody, but he was able to do some slows there, thankfully. So, yeah. The the run's going pretty well. You can see Bree and Reginald don't really do any damage, but they don't have to because Evelyn and Wilbur are carrying super hard here. Evelyn's doing a lot better than I normally have her do on this type of team. So... This is a pretty nice surprise for me. Uh, Bookworm can be really handy because we are putting a shifting scroll into our deck. Uh, sorry, we're putting a scroll of intellect in our deck that is purple and we could grab that. Uh, level three is huge here. Level three is a really big level for this team. This is where spark starts to really pop off because it does damage like burn does damage, um, except it's almost easier to get the electric resistance down. So it tends to do more damage, plus it does damage on the sides, as I was talking about earlier. So that cascading effect is really great. Um, I got a bookworm earlier also, so that's why I didn't take the second one. Uh, there was an opportunity for me to get more books that were more relevant for Evelyn to support with, but this isn't book uh, Wilbur build, right? So I don't want to like overlap too much on that. And here they're already all dead. <laughs> this is that cascading effect we're talking about. Yeah, level three. Really, really big. Uh, we did have to let it go to round two, but that was okay. So here you wanna to go to the temple. You wanna take the combat because you want the goodies inside the chest that they're guarding. This fight can be pretty hard, especially if you haven't hit level three yet, which is possible. Um, uh, yeah, basically they have very electric resistant monsters, fairly cold resistant as well. And on top of that, uh, the seahorse can't be electrified, so that doesn't get applied anywhere. Um, he can still take damage from enemies that have it on the side, so that's nice, but he starts with like 85 or 95% resistance to electricity, so super, super hard to kill him with that. Uh, thankfully, we have a pretty good draw here, and we are level 3, so we don't have to worry about the ramifications of being level 2 and how hard this fight would have been otherwise. Uh, usually it's pretty manageable, but it's kind of a hard counter to this run. Um, but super, super worth doing because, hey, we get Blood Rage, so I'll be able to play in Trench later. We get a purple Superconductor, that's really, really good. Pulsing Heal, I thought about taking, I wasn't sure how good it'd be. I know he's going to be healing, uh, he's going to be giving Bless with heals, but it's fine. Um, we find another Cloak of Speed for Bree, that's just been fantastic. So now she's got purple Cloak of Speed, which applies fast every, uh, round. And we got another War Banner, which applies more powerful every round to, um, from Reginald. And we picked up our Charge Trident which I hope to make purple by going to the Frost Zone uh, and talking to the Rat King, because having a purple charge trident gives you one extra electric charge and one extra wet charge, as well as a little bit more damage, I think. So yeah, uh, it's totally, totally unnecessary to have purple charge trident, by the way. It's just a little nice to have that would make you even more damaging and kill even faster. But that's not really a problem for this team. Now again, we face another seahorse in a random battle. Thankfully, it's not a uh, champion seahorse. The champion seahorses are the worst. <laughs> They're just, just absolutely awful for this team. They're honestly awful for a lot of teams, but especially this one, since they don't take hardly any lightning damage. As you can see, that seahorse, not even a champion, survived our round simply because he couldn't be electrified and it's hard to reduce his resistance. Uh, thankfully, Evelyn being cold will deal a lot of damage to him, so we can rely on her to finish the job if Wilbur can't. Um, <laughs> which does quite nicely. 
Uh, we do want to get Ball Lightning on Wilbur, but not on Evelyn, so I have to opt to not take it. I'm feeling really confident in this run, by the way. You can see I'm taking a decent amount of Corruptors. I'm not too worried about the fights overall. The Hydra's a little bit scary, but Breeze fast enough to not have to worry about them. Um, we go, and by not worry about them, I'm more saying we get to go first before the rest of the Hydras get to go. Normally it's pretty hard to do because the first one slows you by one speed with a 8 frost application on all heroes, whereas the second Hydra has 24 speed. So yeah, really, really tricky fight to do that on, um, but Bree is got the best speed item in the game probably. Uh, maybe tied with stimulant pills, really depends what you're looking for. So. We're pretty happy with where we're at. Uh, one of the hard things about this fight is one of them is immune to wet, the other is immune to electricity. So those two can be fairly difficult to take out because the one that's immune to wet, it'll take decent damage from shock, but it doesn't take the extra damage that you'd normally be doing. So as you see, it takes a lot of hits there to kill it. We fortunately have a lot of AOE cards that bounce around. Unfortunately, Reginald dies because Bree couldn't go before the super fast invincible Hydra. I mean, shocker. <laughs> um, but luckily we were able to go before any other Hydra makes themselves invisible, so we don't have to draw out the fight too much longer. I'm fairly confident I can win with just Ev Evelyn and Wilbur here. And Reginald's just gonna have to take one for the team. So, unfortunately we can't target the back Hydra due to the taunt that is going on, but uh, we'll be able to probably kill it with the shock application charges going between either or the bounce cards that we have. Um, yeah. My damage being transformed to lightning also isn't the best for this fight because this guy is so hard to kill. Uh, I probably should have done frost damage on Evelyn if I wanted to, but I figured she'd have the damage anyways, just like she did there. Evelyn's doing really well. Um, here I was looking up, I was trying to remember what like the lightning skill was for Warriors. I thought there was a new lightning attack on Warriors, but it was actually on Scouts. So maybe I should have taken Andrin over Reginald. It's very doable. It comes in even better turn one kill if you want that. Um, I, in fact, did a run like that before this one <laughs> on a b base game, but I decided not to put it up because I didn't really... I didn't really like the way it went, even though I won. It was just... It wasn't as good as the team could have been. Um, here I pick up Hydra because, I mean... Breeze potion slot isn't doing anything for her. Might as well have something nice come out of it. I find another gauntlets, which is pretty incredible. Uh, Titan gauntlets also just does a powerful every turn, so I give that to Reginald because uh, Evelyn's already getting that. And then we have Storm Tiara here, which is kind of the mandatory pickup of Wilbur because it gives him extra wet charges and extra lightning charges. There I'm showing off what the purple charge trident's going to do, and that's why I'm going to go to the blue portal. So I do see the rope, uh, or I see Charles being there so we can take a upper path and not have to pay a thousand gold to get, take the ship down to the crack in the wall. Um, Evelyn, we find another glacial hammer in the shop. Really, really lucky for us. Again, this run just had awesome luck. It's one of the reasons I wanted to redo my other run because it just went so terribly in comparison. Um, yeah. Uh, Ball lightning is sort of the must pick up here. We're going to be getting a uh, copy spell card out of Evelyn when she levels up. So we're going to be taking that. I opt to make Shatter a um, card that stays in the deck because I'm going to be having Cold Snap. So I thought it'd be nice to have a single target Shatter stay in the deck. It does a lot of damage based on Frost. We're playing a ton of Frost, especially with a purple Glacial Mallet um, with Evelyn. So I figure Shatter might be my most damaging card at some points, <laughs> at least for single targets. It'd obviously be really good on the multi-target attack too, but I didn't think I was going to need that as much because I'm applying so much shock to the entirety of the team. Ah, Nice time for a water break. Yeah, here I'm just adjusting the decks. Um, I think about taking rain out because rain isn't going to do too much here. Uh, I'm already applying wet charges on hit, so I might as well use hit cards, but... I have to take a uh, one of the powerful cards out because I'm getting enough powerful pretty much every turn anyways. So I figured that was a more useless card in my deck and rain can still add some damage by flying four wet to everybody. I do opt for hexproof here because I feel like I have enough stuff to apply to enemies that even though I need to apply the wet charges and lightning charges to have a chance at winning, uh, I felt like I could get through. It does make the fight quite a bit harder 
um, and take a lot longer, but I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. So, the enemies that I'm facing here I also don't worry me too much outside of, I don't know, the front guy purging block is really annoying on Bree. I mean, she won't be carrying it over on her early turns. And the back guy doing some lightning damage when we apply wet to ourselves is also a little bit scary. Yeah. Um, Wilbur dies here, <laughs> which is not great. Um, that guy does, the front guy does a lot more damage than I thought he was going to do. <laughs> And I wasn't able to slow him enough with enough frost. It's, it's one of the things I was realizing that my team was, or that Evelyn might have been lacking a little bit. So I want to make sure she's able to frost more in the future. Uh, having Wilbur go down isn't the end of the world, and we could probably replay the fight to make him not go down, but I I was trying to do not repeats on fights <laughs> if I could avoid it. And I was pretty sure I could live through, like, it was a pretty bad turn. And on future fights, I'm pretty sure I can do better. So, we're able to heal up everybody else to full. Wilbur takes some damage. It's not too terrible. Uh, we do find a Winter Orb, which is kind of interesting, but not something I really want. Um, this fight has a seahorse in it, so I'm a little bit more scared. I thought about taking the exotic shop, but given what the front guy just did to me last fight, I'm especially wary to fight this um, at, at a Corruptor level where they all get more resistances. So, yeah. We, we don't do that this time. We're a little bit smarter. And of course, we couldn't get the slows last time, and he was able to kill Wilbur simply because he had Hexproof and was getting so much buffer, and Evelyn couldn't slow him down. So that was one of the times where Reginald going first would have been a lot better for uh, our survival. It is it is what it is, though. Uh, we can't play Ball Lightning yet. We, aren't, we are getting a decent amount of energy every turn, but we don't have an excess amount of energy. Um... It is probably one of our best damage cards. I mean, it's definitely the best damage card per the card, but for the cost, it's a little bit high. Um, when we double it, it'll definitely be our best damage option. So yeah, even here, that guy almost kills Wilbur again because he got four uh, buffer on himself, which was super annoying, nearly cost me a uh, second life on Wilbur. Um, I do want to heal up, so I let Reginald go. It's pretty important that we get Wilbur up to some level of health, although the decay on him is making that really hard and Wilbur ends up fishing him off himself. Um, Shield Slam as a 4 slow is pretty good. With that, I can have Bree slow down most teams to where Evelyn can go first, especially if I give her a little bit of a speed up, so I'm feeling pretty happy. Um, here we can pick up a light heal. We could get the well-fed bonus, but I don't want to spend all my gold on just that. I go for the 100% heal, but that was more of an accident than anything. And here, here I make a slight mistake where I'm looking at my decks I'm like man how, how hard is this fight really there is a corrupted seahorse but I want the money and the shards badly and I'm like I just got a four slow maybe I can do this I unfortunately didn't do the math correctly where and by didn't do it correctly I mean I just didn't do it at all I didn't even like think to do the math to see if I could make sure that with the four slow or with block I could go first with some block this fight would be a lot easier uh, Wilbur wouldn't die first turn for one, and we could probably finish them all off within a turn like we've been doing for most of the fights. Maybe the seahorse would survive, but we could probably tank a turn of that or two. Um, and I really wanted the money. Wilbur unfortunately dies before we can do anything to save him. And, uh, yeah, that happens for the rest of the team. So, or for the rest of the, for the, rest of the fights. Um, so, here is a really good lesson in... I don't know, insanity maybe is one of the lessons here. <laughs> um, over picking uh, corruptors is another one. Like, try not to pick corruptors that are too hard. I'm going to be trying this fight for a bit. So this is my next attempt on the fight. Like, I know that there's a few different ways I can do this. My goal here is if I can get Bree and Evelyn to survive, I think I can win on round three. Because Evelyn's doing a lot of damage herself we just need to have the two of them survive, but that's looking really, really hard to do. <laughs> I will be playing these fights uh, pretty fast. Here's another later iteration where uh, we are making it so that at least Evelyn could survive. Well, for a little bit. She dies right there. Um, you can see we're getting closer each time on like where the heals have to go, where the cards need to go, and Evelyn survives by one. And I was really excited until Electric Pulse came up and then I died. <laughs> So, uh, part of the problem was that the seahorse was attacking Evelyn, and in terms of random attacks, um, there, for monsters, it depends on the cards that you play where those random attacks hit. Uh, I unfortunately happen to live in the really dumb universe in where Evelyn can't play her frost cards, 
in order for the seahorse to attack Reginald and not Evelyn, putting her at a level that she'll die. I have to play my electric jump card because that's the only one that makes the seahorse attack Reginald and Bree twice and not attack Evelyn so that she can survive into the next turn with a good amount of health. Um, I, at some point, gave up on trying to heal up Bree enough because it just wasn't happening. I did learn how to back up my saves at this point because I was trying this fight so many times. I think I spent like four hours on this fight. Honestly, I could have done an entire another run, but I was really happy with the way this run had gone and didn't want to give up on it. So uh, I backed up my saves mid-fight a lot of the time. That's what you'll be seeing here is like I won turns that I felt confident. I didn't want to like redo the run every time. So here Evelyn is surviving. I figure if I can slow everybody down, I gave up on Brigitte and Evelyn surviving, right? So if Evelyn can slow everybody down so that she goes first on round three, I can definitely take out the rest of them. Unfortunately, slowing down both the Seahorse and the uh, Harpy with plus four speed or plus four fast charges on them uh, so I can go first round three is really, really difficult to do, especially because the Harpy is stealth. If the Harpy wasn't stealth, I could totally do it. I'm really unlucky in the fact that both the Seahorse and the Harpy did their... Uh, charges first turn um and by charges i mean uh the seahorse did his aoe slow the harpy did their aoe speed up on their first turns that's not a guarantee um that's that's just a bit unlucky i'm also really unlucky in that i didn't draw any block cards here i was like <laughs> i slowed it down because i'm like i was given up at this point and like you can see i'm like do i want to retry maybe i give up maybe this is like two hours in or two and a half hours in where i'm like this is this is looking pretty impossible. I don't know if I can win this fight. I've tried so many variations of slight altercations of cards, but here is one where Evelyn survives. I have a good amount of regen and wet on her. Um, I was able to play both of uh, Reginald's turns. You can maybe follow along if you're watching. I was speeding up the footage quite a bit, though. Um, we change everything to Frost. I want to slow down. I wanted to slow down the Harpy initially, but. I actually found that if I played the cards in the right order, I could guarantee that Superconductor could do enough damage to kill the Harpy um, in the right order. And then if I played the Superconductor after I played the, uh, what's it called, the double damage card I just did there, I could then go a second time. Now I only have four real cards left in my deck. And it's Winter Orb, and Winter Orb is random. Now, what's interesting about random cards that you play is that they're actually true random. So if you save and re like, or if you exit and reload on that very same turn, that random card will hit a different way. And I was able to hit the Seahorse the four times that I needed and the other guy the two or one time that I needed, and we get the kill. I couldn't believe that I actually was able to win that fight. Um, that was an insane fight. I'm not going to go towards the crack in the bottom anymore. Uh, because, or rather, yeah, <laughs> the crack of the bottom, uh, I learned how to back up my saves, right? So I saved right before going down there and I realized that I would die <laughs> because down there is another corrupted seahorse and Evelyn's only at nine health and she just dies first turn. <laughs> so <laughs> it was another really unlucky fight. And I was like, well, I'm not going through that hell again. So yeah, a little bit of save shenanigans here, but <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, not something I've ever done before. It was just, I, I don't know, I really wanted this run to go off, so uh, be disappointed with me if you want to be, but uh, I'm happy I didn't have to go through that insanity. <laughs> the Shock Nova first turn is very nice again. Uh, I was looking at the difference in damage between playing Ball Lightning and literally every other card in my hand, uh, and I figured every other card in my hand was probably going to win out here. Especially because all I really need to do is kill one enemy, uh, and then I could or probably survive at a decent amount of health. So we do that. Bree takes a good chunk, but she doesn't die. And I'm fairly confident Reginald, with all his heals that he has, is going to be able to do a lot. Uh, I'd taken off auto end on my <laughs> turns during the crazy uh, super four hour long fight that I sped up to be, I don't know, like two minutes maybe. <laughs> um, really good information on randomness and how it works and how you can play cards in different orders to modify what enemies hit in a guaranteed way and what your cards hit in a guaranteed way. It's really, really funky, but that's the way that the coding works. So even on fights that look impossible, hey, try hard enough and maybe you can win. And I don't know why I spent so long doing that, but I, honestly, it was all the purple tome of intellect. It made me want to this run to succeed so badly that I spent 
an entire another run's t worth of time. Honestly, more on that one singular fight. <laughs> but also, I was getting some good luck with the Cloak of Speeds. I mean, I have a purple Cloak of Speed. How often do you get that? And look at this. I'm rewarded with even more good luck. We get a purple uh, Cold Rune, which will apply Frost to all enemies every turn. So, Evelyn by herself is also just putting a two-speed slow on all enemies, just, like, without playing any cards. Um... Uh, I actually don't take the Corrupted Modifier here. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, but I just, I misclicked, and yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, these fights aren't going to be n anywhere near as challenging. Honestly, that, that one fight I did was probably the final boss of the run. Like, I don't, I don't think any fight's getting harder than that. <laughs> uh, we also hit level 4, so we have the opportunity to do a Spell Echo. Um, not only can we do Spell Echo, the big goal here is we have Twin Scroll, which duplicates a spell in your hand, puts it on top of your deck. Um, Transcribe, which copies the next uh, spell that you play. So, or sorry, the next book that you play. So we could duplicate a Twin Scroll, which will copy a spell that we play and put it on top of our deck. Meaning we can put a copied Ball Lightning, which costs zero, on top of our deck twice. And potentially draw into that with Wilbur especially if we get a few more scrolls of intellect. Um, that lets you play potentially four ball lightnings a turn. And as you can see with two ball lightnings a turn, that's usually enough. Uh, we also find Book of Nightmares here. Um, I want to change it to the self puts it in my hand rather than the hero puts it in the deck. Like I was hoping to do with Evelyn, but I gave up on that dream. Um, so yeah, uh, we get even more damage. Again, his transformation of damage into lightning makes the nightmares some of the better damage cards in the entire game. Um, I think that's often the case for all mages. <laughs> like any time a mage has a chance to, to uh, change damage types, it usually ends up being Book of Nightmares is the strong card. <laughs> um, we're also able to duplicate Book of Nightmares, which is another cool combo, so we can get a lot of single target damage that way if we're not looking for the ball lightning AoE damage. Um, Ball Lightning is close in terms of damage, but like at least a free Ball Lightning is close in terms of damage to three, uh, and not reoccurring Nightmares, I think they're just Nightmares when you upgrade the book. Um, but yeah, reoccurring Nightmares also very good. We're able to play a ton of Shatter here, we're able to just do uh, Nightmares a lot, and yeah, we win before he goes turn two. Get again pretty lucky, there's a uh, purple Winter Orb, that one I'm not saying no to because it hits five times. <laughs> so I like hitting five times and applying some frost, it's pretty nice. I want to grab Citadel here because I want to get a Last Stand in Breeze deck, but I don't know if I'm going to get Last Stand, it's not guaranteed. So I grab Omnipotence, which will make her early game a lot safer than it was before, um, her early turns that is, because I can draw into the skill cards that I need most likely. Uh, I do take Freezing Ink because Bree is going to be playing a book and the Frost and Wet Chargers are both uh, valid here. They're both useful. At this point, I'm thinking Reginald going first might be nice. Um, but then I remember that... No, wait, it's not very nice because I need uh, the... Uh, I, I take the Fast Ring anyways, but it's not really that nice because I have Frozen... Yeah, sorry. I have uh, the purple scroll of intellect that goes into his deck, and I want him to draw that so he can give that to Wilbur and give Wilbur more energized. Here's another cloak of speed. At this point, it's just like way too many cloaks of speed. Um, buying that for Evelyn would be pretty good so that she could have a high enough speed that she doesn't get uh, outsped when Bree slows down the enemies. Because um, currently she gets outsped all the time if Bree only slows down the enemies by two, sometimes even if Bree slows down the enemies by four. Whereas with the Cloak of Speed, she's guaranteed to be fast enough to go to outspeed all enemies, slow down by two. And then she could apply Frost and make sure Reginald and Wilbur go first before all the enemies. And I am hoping to kill on the first turn if I can. Uh, push Forward is a nice to have for Bree, but I don't have too many shards and I really want a innate battle plan. Um, since that is the book skill that she'll be getting for the Frozen uh, Ink. So... I do want to take that. Sacred Ceremony, I want a free upgrade. It costs a little bit too much to upgrade generally. I did get Demonic Tutor though, so I can potentially play it for free if I get Demonic Tutor in hand and not it, and I am able to find that spell. Um, at this point, Reginald's not really doing much damage, and I don't really plan to have him go the damage route. I even got the level 4, like, give somebody invincibility if they get too low, which I'm hoping I don't have to use, but it's a nice to have. So I go for that instead. Uh, Necropotence was really nice on Evelyn. 
it can be changed to focus any hero to give them powerful and in inspire and energize. So you can make a hero really buff all in one card. Um, there's also an option to get Thermal Amulet here, but I really liked having more Frost Charges on Evelyn. Like, with how frosty she was uh, this game, it, it felt only right that I don't go for the Wet Charges more, especially because I'm applying a ton with the Charge Trident anyway. Um, so I instead buy Butcher's Block here. It gives me extra draw for Wilbur uh, in case I don't get enough Inspire on him first turn. Um, Evelyn, I'm also looking to draw Spell Echo first turn, so I keep the Necropotence uh, targeting herself, which will vanish cards in her hand and draw two or draw two x and give her two x energy and two x powerful uh the amount of cards that she vanishes so very strong very good for guaranteeing um or helping guarantee spell echo first turn definitely not a guarantee but that's really what i want because i want to do the double ball lightning every turn there's other ways to make this like a hundred percent and make it more effective. I haven't really been picking up all those cards to do so because it's a bit of an awkward transition. So I'm just going a bit more safe transition where I don't need all the books and I'm enjoying the way the other run is going. I'm not really like super worried about <laughs> hyper optimizing, making sure I always get the kill turn one. Um, as cool as that is. <laughs> uh, I, I do tend to like it when runs are a little bit more dynamic. So, these are the last deck addicts really to make in uh, Town 4. Um, I figured I actually don't need the second Battle Shout here. Evelyn and Wilbur seeming to get all the powerful that they need. I upgrade the Battle Shout because Bree seems to have enough energy, especially with her um, Blood Rage. Uh, Blood Rain at this point, I'm not really like a big fan of. Like It applies a decent amount of wet, but I'm applying a lot of that with Wilbur anyway. So... I'm, I'm figuring that could be taken out of Bree's deck. I probably could have taken the other one out too, but it's sometimes nice in case the enemy has a lot of buffer or I have to fight through Hexproof. Um, here, I don't have a key, but I can go through the center because Wilbur is awesome and he is on a hover disc and everybody can ride on the hover disc over. So we're going to be going to the center here. Uh, very fun use of Wilbur. <laughs> um, getting that center chest full of goodies. So... Something I, I almost always go for. I, I don't like taking the other routes as much. <clears throat> the top route just doesn't really have as good of options. It's pretty hard to get a legendary item from like the one event before the forge. And the forge, even if you have like a good item, they're normally like... I don't know, they're not legendary tier, so they're not good enough most of the time to take over whatever else you have. Um, like the Ruby Kiras here would make me immune to bleed and apply bleed on hit. But of course that's not my build, so even if it was my build, I don't think I'd go that way. <laughs> Uh, I unfortunately don't have the Spell Echo Ball Lightning option here, um, but I do have Nightmares, which of course I, I did remember to change, fortunately, so I can do a good amount of single target damage, and you see 107, 107 for one card is pretty darn good. <laughs> um, yeah, take no damage, we're getting a lot of excellence, killing round two, things going pretty good, I don't need to, I don't know, like change too much about the decks, but... I could probably make them a little bit more efficient. I want Evelyn to draw that Spell Echo turn one, like, every time if I can. I just don't have enough, like, uh, cantrip cards that draw draw for themselves to do so yet. And I like the deck where it's at. I maybe could get her some Ice Lances, but I like that Ice Lance has a double hit, so if she... Um, and by double hit, I mean it does two different sources of damage. Uh, so that she can get the modification if she enchants her weapon to be um, Frost or lightning. It does just double huge lightning damage. Uh, that was a bit of a rough turn of a fight, so I'm going to play that in a slightly different order. <laughs> I do have Omnipotence, so I'm able to change up what I do quite a bit. Um, I'm trying not to have Wilbur die first turn, but I, I mess up and I play the wrong cards again. So here, <laughs> thankfully, I'm able to draw block cards, and uh, I don't slow enough. Like I said, this is where cloak of speed on Evelyn would have been clutch because it would mean that she gets to go first um, before those gunners go and then she could slow them all down probably with all her frost uh, allowing Wilbur and Reginald to go first and probably making it so we could kill them all before they go maybe or if not kill them all before they go kill them all the next turn but 
wasn't to be. Thankfully, I have a ton of healing on Reginald. Wilbur goes from two health up to full. <laughs> um, that's one of the nice things about having a dedicated healer is you can afford to just take a bunch of damage like that. You don't have to have like speed perks maxed out. Uh, you could be a little bit safer, have a little bit more resistance perks too on your heroes, but I was pretty confident this team would get fast later on and be able to kill uh, fairly fast later on. So as long as I could speed manipulate, I'd be okay. I really should have prioritized picking up speed items on Evelyn a little bit more, but I kept getting them all on Bree, and they unfortunately were all like the fast charges. And I don't know. Evelyn's in a pretty good spot. Her armor could change up, and I'd give up the powerful every turn, meaning she wouldn't be as potent, though she's kind of getting seven powerful every turn anyway. Um, and then I could have a lot more consistency just going first, making sure that we're always hitting that damage first. So... Yeah, pretty good run here. <laughs> Evelyn herself just takes everybody out before Wilbur gets to go. I find another Necropotence, which is really cool. I want to get the hero version, like uh, like I was talking about earlier, so I could power up Wilbur in a singular card and make sure that he has a really good turn. I find an Enrage on Bree. Always nice to have because it's a free two energy draw card. Here's Hexproof. I'm pretty afraid of taking too many more risks on this run at this point. Um, but eh, let's go for the free upgrade anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did back up my save just before I took the corruption there. Now that I know how to back up my saves, it was something I felt very uh, nice about. Or, I don't know. I felt good about doing it. It felt like if I made one mistake before, um, your run's just kind of over, and that hurts. But if I make a... Uh, what's it called? A save right before I do the corruptor, then I can kind of just play it safe and not have to spend four hours on a fight to win a run or lose potentially four hours of progress. Uh, I can make a little video. I think um, Decker Tech already has a video on how to uh, do backup saves. It works pretty much like it does in his video other than like there's just three files to copy over now. Anyways, you can look that up if you really want. Uh, Hexproof doesn't end up being too much of a problem for me here even though we are fighting a lightning guy. Uh, and he is unfortunately not super slowed. <laughs> Um, Bree gets a good amount of block, so he doesn't manage to kill us. Wilbur surviving at one is totally clutch. <laughs> I, I get lucky here a lot. Uh, man. And thankfully Reginald, like, all, all he needs is Wilbur survive at one. And he'll heal him back up to full. We'll be A-OK -okay again. Um, here we get the cool Necropotence that could charge up Wilbur all in one turn. Uh, it's hard to justify sometimes because giving up Evelyn's turn to make Wilbur's turn better may not be the best uh, damage output that we could do since Evelyn's doing so much herself. Um, sometimes it could be pretty good. Now I am going to have to not get an excellent here because Evelyn's at 2 health and I want her to have more health for whatever fight we do next. <laughs> so I'm going to have to let um, Wilbur go again. We are able to duplicate Book of Nightmares, get a just a bunch of nightmares in our hand. I could kill them all if I wanted to. Um, I think if I played that in a slightly different order, I could have anyways. But yeah, it's just safer this way. Uh, Reginald is thankfully healing enough that I feel comfortable. And we get a purple mass to spell, which is pretty good. Uh, Wilbur gets a mono gem. He's been needing some extra energy, so that was great to get. We have a free upgrade here which we got for that. <laughs> uh, I do get the upgraded Entrench that I really wanted. I was hoping to get a free upgrade, by the way, because I didn't have another way to upgrade Entrench. Um, here's another Cloak of Speed, which <laughs> I do want an Evelyn. I'll be able to take it this time. Bastion's interesting, but like I can't go minus two speed on Bree. She needs all that speed that she has. Not going first is almost the worst death sentence. Um, I also want a much better armor on Wilbur because I'm noticing he's getting a little bit low every fight and I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that he can survive. I thought about taking life essence on Bree because she does apply some um, vitality charges. So that could be another decent way of healing and getting Wilbur's max health up. But finding retaliator here is going to help him stay alive just till the end of time. Like one, it does damage at the start of your turn, which is great. Um, we can remove our cards here. That intercept's not really doing much for me anymore. Uh, water jet's not also not really doing much for me anymore, though it does apply a wet. Zap arguably could be taken out too, because I'm just I have a lot of energy. So um, this 
This doesn't look like a fight I could do. I don't need Crescent Light. I don't really need the money. So I don't go for it. I, I potentially could have done that Corruptor. I didn't want to have to deal with all the resistances and all their extra damage, even though I get rid of resistances really nicely because mages, mages don't care about resistances as much as long as they're doing the uh, fire, electric, or frost damage. Sorry, my voice is looking out a little bit. <clears throat> so, I have to make this an easier fight. We do get the spell echo turn for ball lightning. We're even able to copy it so we can play three ball lightnings this turn. Um, this isn't the maxed out turn that we could possibly have. See if I had, I do have one more draw. And if I had the book that copied a book, I could have drawn into a fourth ball lightning. Uh, and definitely killed everybody, but who needs to do that? <laughs> um, I will say having one extra white, wet charge here would be nice on the, uh, charge trident as well. Because that does up your damage very quickly. Um. It's not necessary. Uh, we're, we're killing pretty fast. I'm hoping to kill one twin here first. Um, first turn. That was sort of my strategy going into this. Like, I don't have the control of damage cards for this fight. Um, since Wilbur does a lot of random damage and I have a lot of AoE spells and jump spells. So I really need to take care of everything first turn. Uh, Evelyn going first... Again, is nice because we get the extra draw on Reginald, but <clears throat> she unfortunately doesn't get as much Inspire as she possibly could get, which would be good for her to have um, on the first turn of a fight so that she could have better draws. Uh, Bree unfortunately doesn't have like too many ways to give Inspire in this uh, run. So I'm looking for the Spell Echo Ball Lightning. Uh, I do have Ball Lightning here. I'm trying to remember not to play <laughs> any other spell first. <laughs> Which I sometimes do. I was really hoping to get the copy on the duplicate spell, even though it was my last draw card in hand, so I could have more ball lightnings next turn. Uh, I don't get it with Transcribe, but I do have Double Book of my Nightmare as a consolation prize, which isn't too bad. As you can see, I am able to take out the first guy immediately. I don't hit him all the way because I know the electric charges are going to do enough damage to get him down, so that when he goes, he'll kill or the shadow guy goes, he'll kill the light guy, and then he'll do extra damage on the uh, follow-up turn to the shadow guy, so. No problems here. Um, that was that was the victory. <laughs> uh, doing a lot of damage first turn is really nice. Um, wet build is very strong. Uh, I get another enrage chance here. Uh, Vampiric Tutor is really good on Wilbur as well. <laughs> um, uh, that will help me guarantee more uh, ball lightning turns with Spell Echo potentially, so really, really happy about that. And I take the last stand on Bree because I, I want to get max, like, powerful cards, or sorry, max defense cards going. Not that I need them since I'm killing so fast, but just in case for the last fight, it'll make me feel very safe. Advanced Handbook does seem better than the Egg here. I don't need the regen. And having Bree have reduced costs on some of her cards will be great. Uh, Lightbringer, uh, not necessarily the best weapon for Reginald here, especially because he already had Archmage Book, which was drawing him a lot more cards every turn, making his deck a little bit more consistent. Um, but it's, again, not a bad card. It does do extra damage for each bless that he gives, plus it gives him one extra blessed charge, and I was hoping to power up Wilbur significantly more if I could get, a, like, I don't know, one or two more, like, good bless application cards, or maybe even a potion that does the give bless on heal. But... I had no luck finding that item this run. That would have made this run even stronger. Sorry. Like a lot, a lot stronger. <laughs> um, here we do get the Necropotence. Doing good work for Wilbur there. Um, arguably the other one might have done good work as well. Since she could have done it on herself. And then given her more charges. And maybe done more damage. I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, Reginald is able to get his Sacred Ceremony for free. Thanks to the uh, Demonic card in his hand. Um... We have Vampire Tutor, so we don't have Spell Echo, unfortunately, but we can get Ball Lightning for free. I made sure I only had three spells in deck. And Ball Lightning for free tends to be good enough. Did I just duplicate Winter Orb? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, I didn't have the duplicate card. So, we do get the duplicate uh, Shatter. I was able to do Frost Orbs in the deck, and look at all that damage. <laughs> 
<laughs> Turn one kill, easy. Uh, I find Citadel justifying my last stand take. Um, another ball lightning here isn't necessarily what I want. I maybe should change my other ball lightning to a nine cost variant, but I, I like the seven cost variant more in case I do have to hard play it. I didn't have any way of putting it back on top of my deck. So, Demonic Tutor I'm able to upgrade for free, thanks to the corruption I took. Uh, Monogem we can upgrade for free. Citadel I could upgrade for free. And I plan to upgrade uh, Last Stand at the next altar. That's why I upgraded Citadel instead, because I don't really have that many cards to upgrade, and 950 shards should be enough for the last altar to upgrade Last Stand. Uh, even if I take a little bit of a risk and try to make it overpriced. Or, I try to make it cheaper, but it becomes overpriced. Here, I'm just thinning out Wilbur's deck as much as possible. Again, want to get that ball lightning. Turn one with Spell Echo. That's the whole goal. Uh, we get a critical success on the altar, so now I'm able to just upgrade everything, because everything's 50% off upgrade cost. Um, Shifting Scroll, I'm not even sure is worth upgrading, <laughs> but I decided to do it for uh, Wilbur anyway. Um, we make... Uh, the energized draw card go stay in Reginald's deck makes it much better and yeah uh, we get our last stand so I get to play my Citadel and Barricade for free I love it <laughs> made me very happy I love having that like 200 block for not much reason <laughs> just in case you know it, it's like it's a really nice safety net to have I mean that's sort of what Bree uh, block plus the will or Reginald heal is anyways. It's a big safety net, so you don't have to one-shot every single turn. Especially because like, it's very hard to do on the final bosses, given their enormous HP pool. Uh, we do get Vampiric Tutor, but we unfortunately don't have Ball Lightning in the deck, so I have to play something else with it. Um, it's not bad, it's just not what I was hoping for. And again, Spell Echo is not showing up when I want it to. Uh, the Shatter uh, Cold Snap combo has been really nice with Winter Orb because I've been able to play those cards quite a bit. So, discarding them with the scroll is nice. Um, at this point, fights are pretty easy. The only thing I'm really worried about is keeping my pets alive <laughs> for the uh, God, what's it? hand check fight. Uh, we did find another last stand there, but it's too late to upgrade, so it wouldn't be worth taking anyway because we won't be. Citadel for free, not for a cost. I take the uh, vulnerable card there on Bree because I think it might be worth having. Um, we're able to remove a card. Uh, by vulnerable card, I mean she doesn't have any other ways to apply vulnerable that stay in the deck, so I thought I'd get one extra one to help me out. Uh, here, Wilbur gets to take his, his sweet speech against Handcheck and ask him what the ritual is all about. That Handcheck's just like, nah, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, luckily, we get Spell Echo here. This is a really nice first turn outside of Superconductor. Um, though we can get rid of Superconductor to give Wilbur an even better turn uh, with Necropotence. Although we can <coughs> give Evelyn also her good turn by having herself Necropotence, so that's great. Um, we have Demonic Tutor, so I was looking to get Heavenly Blessing with the Demonic Tutor. That's why I picked up that card. Gives even more bless than Sacred Ceremony, but no such luck. Uh, the more bless I apply, of course, the more damage I do. At this point, changing Reginald's damage might be useful. Um, we have Shifting Scroll, we have Vampiric Tutor, but unfortunately we have Ball Lightning. Uh, might have been worth having two Ball Lightnings in the deck, just so I could Vampiric Tutor one out. But I wasn't feeling confident. Thankfully, we have the Spell Echo, so I'm able to double um, the Ball Lightning. I could have put double Ball Lightning on top of my deck, but I didn't have ways to get both out this turn. And I didn't really want Ball Lightning on the Shadow Clone turn. So my plan at this point, because I know I'm not going to be able to kill him, is to play all these cards out, get my book next turn. That does really good double or double damage, single target damage. Um, and then be able to outspeed the clones and kill them before they heal up Handcheck. So that is the goal. Uh, I don't have great ways of doing that. <laughs> Like, I am able to slow down all the clones, however, Evelyn is not fast enough. She is a little bit too slow, except I do have Shield Slam, so now I'm pretty confident I can do this. 
<laughs> right? I must be. At this point, I'm also having more than enough Inspire for the entire uh, Wilbur turn, so I give some to Evelyn as well. Um, <laughs> Evelyn was able to go first before the clone, so now we're doing pretty okay. She can target, uh, or she can do AoE damage, but she could also do a little bit of target damage to Handshake himself uh, while buffing up Wilbur. And yeah. Uh, getting more bless on him, why not? Five more bless, sounds good. Uh, the double Book of Nightmares turns ends up being really, really clutch. We have Necropuns too, if we want, we can buff up my bless even higher. I could play a Ball of Lightning for fun. <laughs> um, nothing really stopping me. Uh, I did accidentally double my scroll of intellect there, I forgot that was a book. So... I don't double Nightmare here, and I actually can't kill Handshack in one card, which is really dumb. I should have also played Necropotence right there, but I forgot to, and then I like I made a huge series of misplays, but then decided to let it go to see what happened. I obviously could have killed him. I just, I don't know, messed up the sequencing really bad. Didn't think for a moment, so. Uh, great turnout uh, for Bree. One of the better turns she could have, drawing Omnipotence, drawing Battle Plan. Um, so... We were able to get a lot of stuff early on. I had to make a decision on whether I wanted to slow this guy down uh, more than enough to have Handcheck, the Shadow Clone that he creates, come out later. Um, but Evelyn being faster than him was already a pretty big uh, sticking point because he comes out with a lot of speed on the next turn. Um, and Evelyn wasn't going to be able to frost him down because she's already faster than the Archon, even without me playing any slows. So the only way I could possibly slow him down would be Wilbur drawing his Shock Nova, which I kept this entire time, just in case I needed it for the clones. Uh, so I opt to just let the clone go, even though he's going to be faster than Bree, and he's going to ruin all our Energize and card draw on the next turn. Um, I thought I could probably just manage anyways. Hmm. So, we also fortunately get the double ball lightning turn. By double ball lightning, I mean we get the triple ball lightning, or quadruple ball lightning turn. So we're able to do uh, a lot of damage. <laughs> um, very satisfying to pull that off. Shock Shatter's unfortunately not doing too much damage, because we don't have a lot of frost on him immediately. But we do have 50 wet charges. So, the lightning damage is pretty high. Um, and then doubling the book, the book of nightmares next turn is going to do a lot of single target damage as well. Um, the clone does go, ruins all our draw, ruins all our inspire. Is generally just annoying. Uh, also makes the Archon go again first because he slows everybody down. I forgot about all that. Still, turn ends up being pretty good. <laughs> um, Necropotence is a good card. And yeah, the rest of our guys are fine. Wilbur starts with 10 energy and like 8 card draw anyways. He also has Necropotence if he needs it. So... Things are pretty good. I'm making sure my other cards aren't books. <laughs> I'm like, Necropotence, you're not a book, right? You wouldn't betray me. <laughs> I play Ball Lightning because Ball Lightning is a pretty good AoE card. Kills the clone and then does some damage to Archon as well. Um, maybe does a little bit too much damage to the clone because I'd rather have it stay alive and deal some shock to the Archon. But we're doing a good, like, 4,000 damage to the Archon this turn anyways. We did, like, 6,000 the first turn, so... I'm not too worried. Pretty confident we're going to all go before round 3 and get a nice, easy victory. Not even scary. Um, here I should totally not just double up electric weapons on Wilbur, and I should give the electric weapons to Reginald. I thought I was going to have enough damage, but I didn't, and so that was silly. So those uh, Bless Charges damage things that he had could have been doing way, way more. <laughs> um, very silly of me not to apply to uh, Wilbur there. I do have the Doom on me as well, which I haven't been playing, so I'm just going to let Bree and Evelyn die. <laughs> Because I don't really need to worry about it. It's just sort of like obviously I could have had them live by playing my cards correctly there But I felt like it was good enough for this run and kind of fun and fitting. So yeah um, Had seven hero deaths again two of those were very preventable uh, Wilbur died a lot probably could have used a little bit more tanky perks on him or made my speed manipulation better this is a fun showcase of the DLC, or not the DLC, but the uh, mod that the person created that feels like a DLC. It's, honestly, it's a really great update to the game. Highly recommend checking it out. Um, again, that's on Thunderstore if you want to look at it. Uh, yeah, Wilbur does great damage. Lightning wet charges is still very, very good. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, 
and goodbye.